we're asked to find the value that completes the square and then write the trinomial as a perfect square. So a perfect square trinomial with a leading coefficient of one must fit this form here. So this tells us that the constant term c must be equal to b divided by two squared, where b is equal to the coefficient of the degree one term, or in this case, the coefficient of x. So looking at our first example, notice how the coefficient of x is positive three and therefore b equals three. And therefore, to form a perfect square trinomial, we must add the constant c, where c equals b divided by two squared, or in this case, three divided by two squared, which would be equal to three squared over two squared, or nine fourths. So by adding nine fourths here, we now have a perfect square trinomial. To factor this, we know it'll factor into two binomial factors. The first terms come from the factors of x squared, which are x and x. And now for the constant terms, we typically ask, what are the factors of 9 fourths, or the constant term, that add to positive 3 the coefficient of x? That's not an easy question to answer, though, when the constant term is a fraction. And that's why it's always helpful to show the work I've shown here to determine the value of c. Notice how here we squared 3 halves to obtain 9 fourths, which gives us the constant term we're looking for in each binomial factor. Since we squared 3 halves to obtain 9 fourths, our two binomial factors are x plus 3 halves and x plus 3 halves, which we can write as the quantity x plus 3 halves squared. Now let's go ahead and check this by making sure that 3 halves times 3 halves equals 9 fourths and 3 halves plus 3 halves equals 3. So 3 halves times 3 halves, of course, is 9 fourths, because we already know that 3 halves squared is 9 fourths. And then 3 halves plus 3 halves is equal to 6 halves, which equals 3, which is the coefficient of x, or the value of b, which verifies this is factored properly. So again, whenever the constant term is a fraction, or when b is a fraction, it's extremely helpful to show the work to determine the value of c. Now for our second example, notice how we'd have b equal negative nine because we have negative nine x as the degree one term. So if b equals negative nine, to form a perfect square trinomial, c must be equal to negative nine divided by two squared, which would be 81 fourths. So by adding 81 fourths here, we now have a perfect square trinomial which we want to factor. So again, we know we have x and x, and now we're looking for the factors of 81 fourths that add to negative nine. Not an easy question, but referring to our work below, notice how we squared negative nine halves to obtain 81 fourths, which means the two constant, fa which means, which means the constant term in each binomial factor is going to be negative 9 halves, so we have x minus 9 halves times x minus 9 halves, which equals the quantity x minus 9 halves squared. And again, let's go ahead and check this by verifying that negative 9 halves times negative 9 halves does equal c, which is 81 fourths, so that checks. Let's also make sure that negative 9 halves plus negative 9 halves does equal negative nine. Notice how this would be negative 18 halves, which does equal negative nine, verifying we did factor this properly. So just to review, the question asks us to find the value that completes the square. So here we have nine fourths, and here we have 81 fourths, and then we're asked to write the trinomial as a perfect square, which in our first example was the quantity x plus three halves squared. In our second example, we had the quantity x minus 9 halves squared. I hope you found this helpful.